In this video, I'm going to show you five ways to make your Photoshop workflow faster. I mean, you work with more speed, especially in 2025. And this is coming up. Hi, everybody, Innocent here, and welcome to the channel. Over here, we make videos like this. If that is something that sounds like you're interested, kindly consider subscribing so i've been using photoshop for the past eight years and over this period i've come across a lot of tips and tricks that i need to share with you if you want to work faster in photoshop so yeah stick and stay for this amazing five tips to make you work faster in photoshop and coming in at number one is use presets and libraries so in photoshop you have presets you have libraries that are default ones that you can use and there are ones that you can also download to make your workflow faster you need to use presets that is you save frequently used type of things Things that you use for instance if you want to apply a gradient overlay to this particular photo you go to the gradient style and you can see that photoshop has given you basic or like default gradients okay but these are ones that i actually use or actually set myself and then i save them you don't need to be setting these pieces or you don't need to be setting different gradients anytime you are working with gradient so what you can do is you can save this preset so that you can reuse it to do that you quickly need to take any one of these if you want a three or four gradient presets like this one for instance if i add one here and add a different color right so i can click ok i'm just using an, any normal color and now i have this three sets preset so i can easily go to new and create a new gradient preset so it adds up to my gradients and i can reuse this on a different project as well so still on the gradients even if you want to download you can go to your browser any browser of your choice search for gradient presets or photoshop presets you can download any of them if you've downloaded a gradient and you want to import it, you can go to import, select the gradient file that you downloaded and import it in your Photoshop and you're going to see these presets. So basically with presets, you just need to tap on it and then it just selects it for you. You can do this for gradients, styles, character and panels and so many things. And it makes your work so easier. Point number two, automate repetitive tasks with actions. I've already explained what actions are in my previous video. I'll leave the full video up here so that you can check it and in the description that basically actions are repeating tasks that you normally do for instance if you bring an image in here and you always unlock it so you unlock it and maybe you resize it you try to crop it so you crop it and crop it from here after that maybe you go to the vibrance and you add a bit of vibrance to it these are things that you are doing maybe you're doing this for five different images and they, they follow the same thing what you can do is that you can create what is known as actions so first of all you go to window and then you go to actions over here so you come down you see i've created some actions over here and I've, i downloaded some of them as well so what you can do is you can go to the plus sign over here and then you can say action so image edit for instance image edit so these things that i'm about doing will be done to this the different image that i bring in next okay so i'll go to record over here so anything that i do going from this point it basically just re record it and once i bring a new image in and i press on play it is going to do the same thing so let's quickly look at this so i'll first of all unlock and then you see it says set background it just records it over here i'll choose my crop tool and then i will crop over here so let me just bring this here i'll crop as i click on this you see it just record crop and then i can go to my adjustments and say vibrance and then i'll add a bit of vibrance to it and then it says make adjustment layer so it basically repeats the same thing once i'm satisfied with whatever i want to do I'll just hit on stop here and then it has recorded as an action for me. So next up, I'll bring a new image in. Let's say this image right over here and I want to do the same thing. I don't need to go through the same process. So all that I need to do is go and select this image, edit over here, click on OK. I'll select this image action over here, click on play and it is going to walk me through the same process. So what I need to be doing is click OK, it unlocks it, crops it and then add an adjustment which i can also edit so it's that very simple you can set the adjustment decrease or increase it and you click ok you just get this done 
quickly and simply for you. You don't need to stress. You can download actions and scripts from Google as well. You just need to search for Photoshop actions and you can download them. Once you come over here, select load actions. And if you've downloaded any actions, for instance, this one that I downloaded here, you can bring them into your Photoshop and you can start using it. Now, tip number three is use keyboard shortcuts like a pro. You know, it's cool and fun using the mouse and just going to edit and say transform but what about if you use ctrl t it makes it makes it simple right what if you want to duplicate an image you can actually right click and go to research for it's even confusing duplicate layer it will duplicate it you go to another point but what if you use ctrl j it makes all your works very simple right so using shortcut makes your work simple now here's a quick tip on how to master all your shortcuts for any of the tabs that you open the shortcuts are right in front of them so for instance if you want to open a new image ctrl n ctrl o alt plus ctrl plus o will browse in bridge ctrl w will just close up your photoshop so ctrl plus w will ask to close up the project if you go through all the tabs over here you can see all of them even actions brush settings all of these things have their various shortcuts well if you are starting up you don't necessarily need to master all of this but the tip here the actual tip here is that as you continue working in photoshop for instance if i want to apply levels on this i don't need to go to image and levels i just need to press ctrl and then l and then it activates the levels as you go through the tabs and you use photoshop take note of these shortcuts because it makes your work so easy if you want to resize an image or a canvas you don't need to go through all this stress also if you go to edit and then you go to keyboard shortcuts you can see all the shortcuts the various shortcuts in photoshop you can study all of this if you want to make your workflow in photoshop very faster and the cool tip here is that you can as well customize your shortcuts so for instance if you don't want to use ctrl plus n for opening a new project or a new document in photoshop you can set it to anyone that you want and you can use that instead of the default ones but in case you want to set it to default too you can come to photoshop default here set it back and you are good to go you know in 2025 you can be working faster and smart without using ai so the next step is use ai power tools smartly not lazily so photoshop has already incorporated a lot of ai tools like adobe firefly the smart background remover that you can go to window and go to properties for instance quick actions and on just a click you can remove background with the power of ai you just remove the background smartly and simply like this it's is that very simple right so take time to study the various ai tools that has been incorporated into photoshop that you can use if you go to adobe.com for instance and you go to their ai section or you can easily google ai in photoshop and it's going to list all the various ai tools in photoshop there are lots of them that you can explore but of course you know if you do the research if you take your time to study them you're going to see a lot of them now you can fill backgrounds you can extend images you can even remove unwanted things in photoshop high courtesy ai so take your time to study all the ai tools that photoshop has incorporated and make your work faster and easier now the fifth thing which is supposed to be the last tip is template everything one thing i love about photoshop as compared to other adobe products like Adobe Premiere Pro is the fact that you can template anything, move it from one hard drive or one PC to another PC without losing all the files. For instance, if I go to my Photoshop files, I have files as way back, you know, this, this, this one says Photoshop files as at February 5th. Okay. So that was the last time that I actually moved from an, one machine or one hard drive to another because maybe my hard drive was full or I was moving on to a new machine. I moved to the new, this new machine in 2025. And I have all these files, this Photoshop project from way back, like since there are some of the files that goes back to the time that I, eight years ago, I started using Photoshop actually. And it makes working so easily. You can template everything basically. So over here, if I search flyer, for instance, you can see that I have a lot of flyers. Okay. So these are all templates that I can easily open and make, take something out of it. You don't lose the files once you transfer, though maybe the resources that you used are far gone. Like they are, they are far lost. You don't even remember the 
the PC that you left it on. But since you have the template over here, for instance, if I open, let me try to open one of these. So this drone hiring thread that I designed for my drone services, you see, I still have the resources. I can easily make changes to this, though there are some of the tests that are gone or I need to update them. But you can see that all the PNG files that I use, I can easily move this to another project that I'm working on. Even these icons, I can easily move them. But the real thing here is that the PC that I designed all of these things on, it's it's far gone. I can't even remember, but I still have the resource over here. So that patches the point that you need to template everything. If you are designing thumbnails, if you are designing brochures, if you are designing products, just template everything. After saving and sending it to the client, don't just delete the file. Make sure that you template everything because it helps you with your next project. So the next time I'm designing another drone flyer, I can easily come and pick this drone over here, send it to the, the next project that I'm working on and I'm able to use it. Unlike in Adobe Premiere Pro that once you delete the files, once you delete the resource files, maybe you can you can just make use of them again, you need to go and pick them back. Photoshop gives you a lot of leverage. So make sure you template everything and your future projects will thank you. Now, I know I said five tips, but since you stay till the end of this video, let me give you one more tip that many people don't take into consideration. And that is custom spaces. So you know that in Photoshop, you can customize your workspaces, right? So Photoshop has given you like the default ones. The most basic one that we normally use is the essentials, but you can switch to 3D for instance. You can as well go to window workspace and you can switch to painting. That is if you are working on a lot more of painting. If you don't like any of these, you can go back to essentials. You can reset your essentials. So normally when you open Photoshop, this is how your Photoshop workspace looks like. Okay. But I normally want to customize my workspace to have more of a layer panel so what i can do is i can come to this properties and adjustments here i'll right click and drag it to this side and that's taken from the layer panel okay so i can do the same thing for this as well and i can even close it you can just close this one here close this so that you have just your layers at the layer panels other thing any other thing that you bring in for instance if i want to bring the properties i just click on properties and you know it will just come here but this same thing also you can put it inside here and let me close the tab even for your tool panel you can make it double standard like this or you can just make it straight up i prefer the straight up but which one do you prefer you can drag your tool tool panel to this side if you want to and of course you can put it back if you don't want to but if you do anything and it feels like you've gone overboard you can easily go to the workspace over here click on reset essentials and it will take you to the very default thing that Photoshop starts up in. And yes, those were some five bar tips plus one extra that will speed up your Photoshop workflow in, especially in 2025 and beyond. Let me know which one of these were your favorite and which one did I miss? You can leave them in the comment section and I can make a part two of this video if you are so interested in. But then, thanks so much for sticking around to watch this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave your thoughts in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's Innocence here and bye.